Howdy folks, we got a single stack Mac with a window in the back and it needs some work. This is a 1977, I think, R model Mac. I made a couple videos about this before. I think I did some electrical work and air brake work the first time and then last fall we put a radiator in it. Local farmer owns this, he uses it to haul grain in the fall and his complaint is that it won't start. I think it's got some bad batteries. So it's been sitting in the shop here for about 48 hours. I've had the batteries disconnected. Let's see if it'll start. Negative. So that's the major problem. It's a little bit tricky because if you charge the batteries, they will pass a load test, but they won't hold a charge for more than a few hours. And I've taken the battery cables completely off, and it's the same for at least three out of the four batteries. So I don't know if they're shorted internally or they got frozen or what the problem is, but it's nothing to do with the charging system or the cables. It's the batteries themselves that are bad. This truck has a master disconnect switch. See it up there? And he always turns that off but the batteries are always dead. He also said the left tail light doesn't work and the right rear axle seal is leaking. You see we got oil in the rim there. It's just the axle flange here that's leaking so we need a new gasket for that. And then he says ever since I put the new radiator in that the temperature doesn't regulate very well. It gets real hot and then all of a sudden it'll get cold again. So it's either got a problem with the thermostat, or I think more likely it's got a problem with these shutters. It's got these thermostatically controlled air actuated shutters on the front of the radiator. And I don't know if they're working right since they shoved the hood into it. They are opening, but I don't know if they're opening at the right time. So we may just eliminate that. He never drives it in the winter anyway. I guess we'll see how it goes. Max always got to do it their own way. Nine sixteenths bolts in this axle flange. Ah! Don't ask me why. Of course, the fun part about nine sixteenths bolts is you need two different size sockets. Because the bolt head is what seven eighths, and the nut is thirteen sixteenths. Yeah. All right, folks, this should be a relatively simple job. Axle flange gasket leaks, pull the axle out, replace the gasket, slap it back together, 20 minutes and you're done. But here at the Watch West Work Bermuda Triangle of Repairs, nothing's ever that simple. Well, the reason that the axle flange gasket was leaking is that these studs that hold it together were loose. And they're loose because the threads in the aluminum hub are all stripped out. At least four of them I've found so far are completely stripped out. So as soon as I tried to tighten, these up, it just pulled them right out of the hub. Somebody's already tried to fix this one by installing a helicoil. That's why it had this goofy little bolt. But someone chopped it off and it's only had about two, two threads contact in that helicoil. And a helicoil is not the right way to fix this. At least not in my opinion. So you see how, you, how these threads have, a, or these studs have an unthreaded section right here? That acts like a dowel pin. So the holes are actually unthreaded for, I don't know, a couple times the diameter. And the unthreaded part kind of dowels it, dowels the aluminum hub to the axle flange. And if you helicoil it, like what's done here, you lose that doweling effect so your, your axle won't be perfectly centered in the hub. So the only way to fix this is to replace the hub. There's just, there's no two ways about it. I, I don't think it's possible 
I don't think it's possible, even if we took it apart and, and you know, set it up in a machine to install a helicoil, a helicoil in a satisfactory way to still get that doweling effect. So that's it. It's got to come apart. We got to replace the hub. Some kind of convoy going on out there. This truck has bud style wheels. There's an inner nut and an outer nut. And the nut doesn't have a flange. So we have to protect this fancy aluminum rim from our socket. Now there's a ring you can buy that's cut out for all the nuts that protect your socket. I can't find mine, so I'm just gonna use a throttle body gasket. Fits right over the nut. It'll save the... Well, it'll save me getting yelled at. Oh. That sucker tight, don't they? Oh. I don't think so. I apologize to my more sensitive viewers, but sometimes you don't get a choice. <clears throat> and the truck traffic is just unreal. They're emptying out every grain bin in the county. I don't know if you guys can see just how bad this helicoil job is. It's not even close to straight. It goes in about like that. So they probably just freehanded it 
while it was still on the truck. It, it's not going to work. I'll show you what's going on with these other threads. So. Well, I found three so far where all the threads were pulled out and these studs aren't fully installed. They should be, I don't know, another finger width lower. So I feel pretty confident if we pulled these three out, we'd probably find out that they're, they're stripped as well. So there's no fixing it. it. Needs to be replaced. All right, folks, sorry about the road noise. Apparently it's five o'clock. Anyway, I made a trip to my local truck junkyard and I found a matching hub. So this is specific to Mac. Only a hub from a Mac axle will work. This one has the same eight bolt axle flange. There's a few minor differences. This one has a drain plug or a fill plug that the other one doesn't have. And the old one has this tin shield on the backside that we don't have in the new one. But I'm not gonna worry too much about that. In order to replace that shield, we'd have to knock out all the studs. And this replacement has the correct right hand studs in the correct length, so I don't see any reason to go to all that work. The hub came with the wheel bearings. Those wheel bearings are in good condition, so we're gonna reuse them. I did switch a couple of the studs over from the old hub. It was missing a couple studs out of the new one. I got a new wheel seal, and I was missing one nut and a couple of lock washers, so. We should have everything we need. By the way, if you're wondering if you have a good auto parts store, go in and ask them for a 9 16 fine thread nut and just evaluate the expression on their face. I've got a good one here. You'll want to visit your national wheel seal dealer for a proper seal installation tool. I like these universal tools. Darn things grow on trees. I think we're going to have to go a little bit deeper. That's it. Yeah, by the way, be careful running your hand over these threads. Little suckers can be pretty sharp. Ask me how I know. We just want to tighten it up good and tight to make sure any you know, there's not any problem with the bearings being seated. We'll back it off. This nut has a little dowel, it needs to be facing out. Now we're going to torque it to 50 foot pounds.
Okay. Now back a quarter turn. So, well, I ground the big burrs off the outside nut. Obviously, I'm not the first guy to hit it with an air hammer. The outside nut gets torqued to 350 foot pounds. And there's no fold over lock or you know, any kind of keeper on that nut, so you better get it tight. Now, if we've done things right, we should have one to five thousandths of end play. That's good enough for me. All right, we got a new gasket. And again, this is specific to Mac. They're the only ones that have this bolt pattern. So I'll look up a torque spec for those and we'll torque those once the wheels are back on and it's sitting on the ground. Otherwise it's just going to want to turn on us. Does anybody see a problem with this tire? Anybody? She has lost her wind. Must be something stuck in it somewhere. Do I have the energy to break down a tire tonight? Don't think so. We'll, we'll tackle that in the morning. Morning folks, it's tire time. I have identified the problem. That'll do it. That's pretty amazing.
I'd like to use one of these lead wire combination repair units. They're good for up to a 25 degree angle, so we should be fine there. The problem is there's so much tread depth on this tire that it's gonna be tricky to get that thing all the way through. Come on. Oh. That's how far it's gotta go. Well, let's ream it out good and we'll see, see what happens. I had some guys suggest I try this inner lining compound, so we're gonna we're gonna give it a shot. I haven't used it before. Well, folks, I hit another bump in the road. The threads on the inside of this inner bud nut are all mangled. I ran a tap through it, but I just don't trust it needs to be replaced. And I can't get this style nut locally. I'll have to order it. And I'm up against the weekend, so it'll probably be at least Monday before we see that. I'm guessing that this truck originally had steel inner rims 
and then they replaced them with aluminum rims and they didn't replace these studs with the longer studs and uh, yeah I mean it'll work everybody does it but it's not it's not ideal it's just you, know, you figure I don't know eight or ten bucks a piece for the studs times ten times six corners well I'm sure they did the front ones so times four plus labor you're probably looking at six hundred dollars to replace all those studs so yeah I'll mention that to him but I'm gonna I'm gonna guess he's not gonna want to do that anyway we're stuck for now I think we're gonna split the video probably split the video here and I'll bring you guys back when I get some parts well when I get this nut and then when I get the parts to fix the batteries and uh, yeah we'll try to wrap it up in part two so thanks for watching guys and yeah I'll see you back here soon I get a lot of comments about the dangerous chemicals that these crop dusters are spraying. Don't worry, it only kills fungus. <laughs>